even during the mental perturbation which was the natural result of the extraordinary circumstances in which i was placed the question asking faculty and propensity of my mind one of its leading traits found sufficient time for exercise and many were the whys hows and what fors which causality propounded but to which at first there came no response it is almost impossible to convey an idea of the strange processes by which the knowledge flowed in upon my soul it seemed to be absorbed knowledge all knowledge may be said to float in the spiritual atmosphere underlying the coarser air men breathe and in certain states reachable by every human being this knowledge is drawn in involuntarily just as salt absorbs moisture the spirit cannot touch gross substance directly but moves along the surface on an aerial stratification near the earth. These strata are about 60 feet apart, and there are transverse, vertical, and other lanes leading in all directions through them. Near the spot over which I hovered stood a house embowed with trees, and in this house was a study, and in the study I saw the object, above all others, which had been the theme of my long prior and commencement of my aerial journey, namely, a man. That man was apparently educated and refined, for near where he sat stood a library of books, one of which was the moment engaged in reading. The title of the book was Neander's Life of Christ. Calmly read the man. Still more calmly I observed him and his surroundings, and the result of this observations was a firm conviction that these theories propounded by Newton and generally admitted to be true concerning light, color, and sound are not correct or even approximately so no amount of disbelief on my part of others no amount of ca cavilling nor reasoning can ever convince me that the experience now being recorded is anything less than absolute fact the direct contact of my inner being with the truths here related hence i hesitate not for even an instant in the challenging and guesses of even a newton and the offsetting against them the results of my own personal inspection of phenomena where this principle he treats in the first place there are many different kinds of light in the present instance there are two sorts of operation first the rays of solar light fell upon the printed page and with it a still finer more subtle white and velvet light from the eyes of the man himself which proved to me that men gain a knowledge of external things by means of absolute and positive irradiation from the soul itself whose seat is in the central brain and this through the medium of optic nerves retina and other delicate organs in proportion to the central power of the soul it suffuses and bathes everything in and with a subtle aura and this aura is the mysterious telegraphic apparatus by means of which it issues its behests and receives information. While gazing upon this beautiful sight, I distinctly heard a bell ring, and yet that bell was not sounded within two hundred miles of the spot where the very moment of the body of the rider lay wrapped in a death-like pall of insensibility, as was proved by the actions of this man within the house near I stood investigating the sublimest of all phenomena, namely the human soul, its phases, modes and nature the student instantly laid down the book and rose to his feet not however to respond to his ringing but to bid his three or four little mischief loving prattlers be quiet make less noise put aside the handbell and not disturb him by its tinkling all this was deeply interesting but the most what most attracted my attention was the discovery of the fact that sound is not as thousand scientific men have asserted a mere vibration of aerial particles but on the contrary is a fine very fine and attenuated substance which leaves any and all objects that are jarred or struck and leaves in greater or less volume and pointed pencil rays single rays broad sheets of various shapes and in undulatory waves according to the nature of the object whence it flows the force of the blow struck and the character of the object used in striking it would be quite worth while for our savants to make experiments to verify or if possible refute these statements the man resumed his seat and i saw that from his internal brain were proceeded to the outer ears innumerable fibers of pale green light 
and that the pencil rays and the sheets of sound which were at the moment floating through the contiguous space came in direct contact with the terminals of what for what a better name I call fibers or more properly fibrils the contact took place within the rim of the external ear and the sound was instantaneously transmitted or telegraphed into the auditory nerve of the sanctum satorium of his very soul 